let's take a problem and see how we can solve this using this filter map reduce paradigm. We'll follow the best practices of doing coding in Earth Engine and see how we can think of the problem and break it down and solve it step by step. The problem that we want to solve is we want to calculate the yearly rainfall in a given city for last 20 years. So given a city, we want to know what was the annual rainfall for each of the last 20 years. And this problem seems kind of quite complex and abstract. If you were to do this on the desktop, you would go to some data set, download the data, and you know maybe you'll get daily data. So first you have to compute yearly data. So you will take all these rasters, compute the yearly sums, and then take the region that you want to compute, do some zonal stats and say, for this region, give me the average value of the rainfall in a year. But as you start increasing, say I want not for 20 years, maybe I want it for last 50 years, then the competition becomes massive. We'll do this in Earth Engine and see how we can kind of think of this problem and solve this using this filter map reduce paradigm. First, let's find some data. I'm gonna search for precipitation. There are many, many data sets in the data catalog. If I just go through the list, each of the data sets, some of the global data sets, some of them are regional data sets. You can read each more about each of these data sets here. Some of the popular choices are GPM. GPM is useful and GPM and GS map. They are useful if you want near real time information. I want to know the rainfall three hours ago or I want rainfall yesterday, right? So if you want near real time, they're not that accurate, but you get some information about something that is near real time. You have uh, CHIRPS. CHIRPS is a consistent long-term time series, 30 plus years of global precipitation data, very high quality. If you want to do some time series analysis and compare you know, the history of each pixel and trends, CHIRPS is really good for that. You have ERA5. ERA5 is also very popular, 50 plus years of time series and again, very widely used. You also get a lot of other climate variables like wind speeds, etc. We're gonna use this uh, CHIRPS data. CHIRPS is a data set, one of the highest resolution rainfall data sets five kilometer by five kilometer grid going back 1981 right so you have 40 plus years of rainfall data at each pixel at every five day interval at five kilometer resolution so again for climate people this is very high resolution for remote sensing people we might say five kilometer is not high resolution but this is the highest resolution rainfall data that you can use you have images where each image is five days of rainfall and they are called pentad images and units are the pixel values will be millimeters of rainfall. So let's say I want to use this and we'll rename the variable. This has got all the data. So let's just first define a period. So I'm going to do start date. Again, we're going to use Earth Engine API for all our date functions as well. We're going to say I want to, my start date will be year 2000, my end date. For now, let's just do it for one year. So I'm first we'll do it for, you know, calculate the rainfall for one year. And then we'll just scale it to 20 years. First, we'll just do one year. And you can say, I want to compute the end date, which will be start date at once by one year. Okay. We'll filter it. So we'll take our chirps collection, apply a filter. We'll take our start date and end date. And if I now do print this, you'll see that this image collection has 72 images one image every five days so 72 images they have rainfall so this image has rainfall from 1st to 5th january this image has rainfall from 6 to 10 january at every pixel in the entire world okay. so you have this global rasters again very large data sets if you start downloading it's going to be gigabytes of data but now we can just access it here in earth engine now we have this data for one year i want to know what's the total rainfall at each pixel so i want to know at each pixel what was the total rainfall in a year we can do this using a reducer. So we can just say, I want to reduce it and we'll just say total rainfall. So we want to sum each pixel. So we'll go to our reducer section of the documentation and we'll find a reducer. It's easy enough. There is a e reducer sum that will sum up the values, all the input values. So we'll say, give me e reducer sum. And this is going to sum up each pixel, there are 72 images at each pixel. We're going to sum up and get a yearly total rainfall. Let's add it to the map and see what's the total rainfall in the year 2000 at each pixel. As we display the image, we need some visualization parameters. So we'll define some vis params. 
will need the min and max value. And again, this is rainfall, so we can say most of the rainfall in most places would be between zero to thousand millimeters. We can adjust that later if you want. And then we get some palette. Let's get a nice little palette from Color Brewer. I think this blue palette would look nice. I'll make it a little more colors, and then I'll get this pipe palette. So we have our visualization parameters, and run. And once the processing finish, you get the total rainfall at each pixel displayed on the map. So if I go and inspect any pixel, it's gonna say that at this pixel, the total rainfall was 439 millimeters for that given year. And we could do this at a global scale. So this was filter and reduce that caught us this data. And as we look at different pixels, you can see light to dark. There are regions with high rainfall and low rainfall for one year. Okay, so this is done, but again, we are interested in the rainfall for a given city. So let's say total rainfall for a city. You can draw a polygon, you can upload a shape file of your city and use that as a geometry. So we'll just say I have some uploaded assets. I'm gonna take that and let's say, I'm gonna use the uploaded geometry for Bangalore, the city of Bangalore. This comes from public domain data set, which I had uploaded and I'm just gonna use that. So we're gonna just define that. This is uploaded as a shape file and we just extract the polygon. So now we'll add it to the map and just display this. So this is our region of interest. You can see this is the municipal boundary of the city of Bangalore, and there are many, many pixels within that. So what I want to know is, there are all these pixels that fall within the city. What was the average rainfall in the city? If I want to compute the total rainfall that happened in the city, I want to say there are maybe you know, 20, 30 pixels inside, I want the average value of that. This is something that you can do with a reducer. Whenever you think of yourself saying that I have many pixels, I want to compute some statistics, that's where you use the reduce region function. So let us say within this city, we have this total image, which is the total rainfall for a year. We run reduce region, control space to autocomplete. And here we specify the reducer. This is the, we have many pixels of the image, what do you want to compute out of that? We just want average. Remember, rainfall is always summed across time, but average across the region. Because if you think about it, it rained 1,000 millimeters at your house, it rained 1,000 millimeters at your neighbor's house. The total rainfall in your neighborhood is not 2,000, right? It's just 1,000, right? So you need to average it across the region. So we'll do user mean, geometry is the geometry we give, scale, we need to specify the at what resolution we need to do the analysis. That has to be, we always go and check the data. And the bands tab, there will always be the resolution mentioned in meters. We always use that. to will get the most accurate results if you use that scale. The rest, we can skip this. And sprint the stats. It says in this region, in year 2000, the average total rainfall was 1081 millimeter. And this is a dictionary, so we have a key. We can just say, just print this number. Okay, so now we were able to get, start with the data set, take all the, apply a filter, sum up all the pixel values for a year using a reducer, and then get the mean value across a region using a reducer. If you want to do it for the next year, we can say, I want to do this for year 2001. And I run it, in two seconds I have the answer, right? I didn't have to download and process all the data again, I just changed the date. So if I set up my script and say, I have given a date, I can compute this, I can do this. But again, I want to do this for 50 years or 20 years. I don't want to do it one by one. I want to do it all together. And I want to also export the results as a CSP file. So now with Earth Engine, the paradigm is once you figure out how to do it for one thing, you can map a function to do it for n number of things. So the trick here is to figure out what is that one thing that we can do. So we can say, uh, I will write a function to calculate the yearly rainfall for one year. Given a year, tell me what is the total rainfall. And then I'll map the function 
over a list of years, right? So now I don't have to do it manually. I can run this function in parallel across all number of years, and I'll get my results in an instant versus doing it manually. So we already know how to do this for one year. So I typically, when I'm working on an analysis, I'll figure it out for one time step or one image. Once you have this, just copy everything, put it in a function, and then you can run across multiple images or multiple years or multiple uh, data sets. So let's write this function, calculate rainfall. This function will take a year as the input, and you need to return the total rainfall. Right. Do I know, given a year, how do I compute the total? Well, that's what I have done it all here. So I'm gonna copy all of this and put it inside of the function. And now you'll see why using the API is helpful because now I can say, given a year, this is how you compute the start and end date of a year. I'll just say whatever variable was given as an input to the function, I'll use that to compute the start date and end date. That means if it was year 2025, this will be year 2025. And rest of the code just remains same. I'll filter, do the total. I don't want to display it here. We'll compute the total stats. And once we have the result, I'm going to just say this is the result. I'm going to return the result. That's it. So give, this is a function now, which takes a year, gives me the result for that year. Let's test this function. So I'm going to call this function and say calculate rainfall for year 2000. See if it works. Works. I can call this function again and say for 2010. I get a different number. Right? So now I wrote a function. I just need to call it with different number of years. I can do this 10 times in a row, but that's sequential. But we are in Earth Engine. We have lots of compute. And to use that efficiently, we need to use map. So let us generate a list of years. We'll use our favorite function, east sequence, to generate a list of years. We'll just say year 2000 to 2020. I have a list of years. I want to compute the total rainfall for each of those 20 years. And I'm just going to say years dot map and this function. This says, take this list of years, run the function on each of the years in parallel. And now if I print it, I have total rainfall for each of the years. I didn't do it sequentially, I did it in parallel, and I could do this, and I can just change it to 50 years and I'll get my results. Okay. So this is using map. So we did filtering, some reductions, we did a map, and now we get the result. This is great, but many times you're doing this large scale processing, this will not finish in five minutes. And many of you will encounter errors like computation timed out or user memory limit exceeded. The solution to this is to run it as an export. Also, you may want to take this data and do some regressions or do some other analysis. It'd be nice to get this data as a CSV file. So if you want to get output as a CSV file, we need to export it as a feature collection. Earth Engine can export feature collections as shapefiles or CSVs. So let's just create a feature collection instead. Instead of returning this result as a number, we'll just say we'll return it as a feature. A feature is just some geometry, if we don't have a geometry, and just some value, we'll just say total. So this, we just return it as a feature, and now when we return as a feature, you'll see that you get a list of features. Features is just organizing the same data as a feature collection, so we can export it. We can also say, I will say, I, I, have year as one of the values in the feature. So we can have a column for year and total. We have this feature collection and put this in two values. So now we have a list of features. We'll just convert this, we'll convert into a feature collection. We'll, there's a function called feature collection, which will take a list of features, which is this. And we now get a feature collection object. So if I print this, you'll see it, I have a feature collection of features, which I've computed my results. And finally, we can just say export it. So we can use the export table to try function. Control space to autocomplete the parameters. Let's fill the parameters one by one. We can give them as dictionary. What collection do we want to export? This is the FC, give a description. Let's 
we generally export it to a subfolder in the drive. The file name prefix, we'll just say rainfall. Format, if it was a geospatial data, you can export it as shapefiles or geojson, etc. This is just a CSV file, just two columns of data. So we'll just say this is CSV. And now we run our export and it's going to run this. The advantage of doing this as an export is, let's say you want to do this for hundreds of regions or it's a very long computation. If you try to print it in the console, it'll time out in five minutes. Exports can run for a longer time. It uses a lot more resources. And then you will also get the data in a format that is readily usable in other software. We're just finished. I'm going to open this in Drive and let's see what we got. We got the CSV file that we created from our code. And you can see this one has a year and a total column. And we can download it and use it in any software. So again, this kind of demonstrates the workflow where we start with the problem. You need to break it down into what data set you'll use, what filters will you apply, what computation would you do using MapReduce, and finally, in what format would you export the data. Once you think of those steps and structure your code, you'll be able to scale your computation to very, very large regions, very, very large amounts of data, because you will be able to leverage all the computation that Earth Engine is to offer. This code also follows the best practices of coding in Earth Engine. Number one, always use the API functions, even for simple calculations. And that means you will be able to run your code as a map reduce. If you map a function, if you use any client side code inside of this, it won't work. So always use the API functions for even things like calculating start and end dates. Second, use map reduce. Do not use for loops. Do not do this one by one. Always map a function so you can run this in parallel. And finally, always export your results. Exporting results allows you to run it for a longer time, use more resources, and you'll not encounter all of the scaling errors that you typically encounter. The workflow that I just covered is part of this blog post, and you can go and kind of learn the step by step. It's got some additional information on different data sets, etc. So if you're keen on kind of replicating this for a region, check out this blog post.